because we've got a lot to talk about. So obviously, Surviving R. Kelly, the six-part docuseries on Lifetime, shocking, shocking allegations and survivors coming forward, um, basically setting the industry and music industry and Hollywood just ablaze on social media and now uh, singers that have collaborated with him coming forward and sort of denouncing this Lady Gaga being one of them pulling um, her song uh, what was it um, why Do What this? You Want Do What You Want, Do what you want yeah, yeah. Um, from it she had actually performed that live I remember on SNL with him I want to just start with this is R. Kelly the Harvey Weinstein of the music industry meaning <laughs> I think he Definitely is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no thinking. He is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the allegations in this six part series were just unbelievable. And the fact that this went on for so long. So long. He, That's the thing. For I mean, this is, it's not news. Since I was a kid. So like, you've heard about, okay, well, yeah. we, you're, you're, let's just go back okay. to our viewers. You're talking about the first case when he, the video was discovered, he was with a 14 year old girl right. having sex and there was, you know, uh, water, quote unquote, water sports going on and a lot of other unspeakable Trump acts. Style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh, exactly. oh my god exactly but that's fake news right okay but no <laughs> r kelly that was dismissed basically with all of that he got Which off crazy okay so you're just going from the knowledge of that well, but no, i'm going from the knowledge of Aaliyah. That's what i, I was remember say. Okay. Aaliyah. yeah when i was really young i really liked Aaliyah, and she was older than me but i remember r kelly being on the cover of yes. her album and then the whole age ain't nothing but a number and then i heard they got married and i was like wait what she's 15. yeah i thought he was shady from the get-go so let me ask you lena because with your and, and for viewers that don't know your husband is a mm -hmm. producer in the industry Industry. Right. So obviously he industry. runs in some of these circles and does know a lot of these Correct. producers. Um, when Aaliyah and them married, I, what I learned from that documentary was that I didn't realize that she, when she was 15 though, but then they like forged the paper. Was that right. known at the time that it happened? I don't. I don't. Think I don't it believe was. so. No, I'm no. aware of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you remember this when they got married? Yes. But you don't remember it being the, like she's not actually eighteen. But there were all allegations, and there were people who said they weren't married. So we never right. knew what was really, really true. Happening. Yeah, what was really happening. But then, and the, they seemed in love, right? They seemed we were very supposed close. to think That's they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they seemed very close. But now that we know yeah. all that he does, it was definitely not a the healthy brainwashing, yeah. the cult yeah, thing exactly. that people are saying. But the interesting thing with him being acquitted in that trial for you know allegedly molesting the fourteen-year-old girl in the tape, yeah. her family did not cooperate with prosecutors, and her father is still supposedly in R. Kelly's band. So, Jeez. you know, it raises a lot of questions as to why they didn't participate. Yes. Was there a payoff involved? Right. What exactly happened? What was their motivation? So, Itai, yeah. you've done a lot of reporting on the Me Too movement at large for Hollywood. Now, with the documentary basically leading to now an actual legit investigation, do you feel this is going to come to a similar conclusion like Bill Cosby, like Harvey, like um, Kevin Spacey still pending? But do you think now with this many women in numbers that there is going to be justice? I think if anyone has started to write the obit for the Me Too movement, right? A lot of yeah. people saying it's lost its steam, we're tired of hearing about these stories, it's swung too, too far to one side. I think we've seen this week that they are sadly mistaken between R. Kelly and uh, uh, Lasseter and uh, Louis C.K. And yeah. There have been so many stories this week. Yeah. Uh, Les Moonves, the, the fact that he's not getting his uh, his his hundred and twenty million dollars. Um, Which he desperately. Whether or not this is going. <laughs> We talked extensively about yeah. that. <laughs> and now we have Teray, one of the journalists featured. Right. I'm going to get to that, though. Yeah. Let me just figure, though, that I'm sorry, not to not to, side, to to digress back to what I would. I want to ask something more specific, because what struck me the most about watching the documentary, aside from the fact that I counted with the prison interview with the brother, with the numbers, I mean, it was just. Oh, oh my goodness. I right? just was like, I, I had to keep, I, I had to rewind it back because I went, wait, that was his brother. And I'm like, they're interviewed by the brothers and Jenna goes, I like older women, you know. <laughs> yeah. We all got our preferences, and he likes young women. I mean, but they're it's illegal, sir. It's like illegal. 
<laughs> did it strike you the amount of people that were recalling what was going on, but yet nobody, like, I saw Robert at the high school and I thought, oh, this was weird. I saw Robert do, mm-hmm. I saw a bed exactly. in the middle of the studio. So what I want to ask is, should these enablers be held just as uh, accountable in some way, shape, or form? What's your opinion, Anita? I think there should be some repercussions for these enablers because there were, Mm -hmm. we had his former manager and tour manager and personal assistant saying he accompanied R. Kelly to shopping malls at every tour stop to pick up young women and sometimes girls. Do you think it was a situation um, where just like, as long as the check cleared? They were going to keep their mouth closed. I think so. I think that's yeah. what drives a lot of people in the industry. Um, like we'll talk about with you know Lassiter. Yeah. I think it's just so sad that these young women's lives and their livelihood and their future is totally pushed aside just because oh I'm getting a check so I'm going to keep my mouth. You shut. You know it's interesting. I was watching. It's, we're talking about her later, but Megan Kelly yes. um, had some parents on from a daughter. Now at this point, the daughter was in her twenties, so it's like what can you do? But they're saying our daughter's in a cult. You know. It was very clear that they received a letter from her, but yeah. her name was spelled wrong. Who spells their own name wrong in their yeah. letter? And they're like, no, this is clearly written by the manager. And it's like, if a manager is forging fake letters to parents, I think there should be legal ramifications for mm-hmm. that. I, I think we're doing a disservice, by the way, the media specifically, doing a disservice to these girls by calling this a cult. Yes, there are a lot of cultish things about this specific story that coincide with Scientology or Nexium or any of these other cults. Yeah. But we have to remember there's a difference here. These are young girls who mm-hmm. did not have any right. kind of uh, choice in the matter of joining the supposed cult and then getting brainwashed. These are yeah. young girls. So I think the terms that are more appropriate here is is child molestation or, or child abuse, but definitely not cult. My question about as we're in this era right now, Me Too uh, era, and a lot, do you, okay, so you know how like when um, a person commits murder, and then someone who knows facts about that can be essentially charged accessory before, is there a similar thing that can be, I'm asking this as like, and I'm ignorant on this, so I'm asking, if someone is, uh, if he's found guilty of say, committing sexual misconduct or, or rape or sexual molestation, and then you were able to prove that people around him sort of knew this, mm-hmm. can they be then charged in a way that you can with a murder as an accessory? I'm not an attorney, so I don't yeah. know. Okay. But first, it has to be determined that crimes were committed. So yes. we have a prosecutor in Chicago saying she yep. is considering opening up an investigation and they reportedly have no one's come out and confirmed it in Fulton County, Georgia, um, the two places where R. Kelly allegedly ran these sex cults. Um, so we, there is no specific, specific investigation that has been confirmed. Yeah. Once there is, perhaps prosecutors will find a way to charge people as accessories. So I think it's much more difficult, obviously, because you know this is years sometimes after the after the incidents took place. Right. Memories are fuzzy. You have to mm-hmm. sort of show that they knew exactly what they were doing, that they actually knew that they were sending these girls to a specific, you know, outcome. But uh, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself the same thing about all these agencies in Hollywood who were sending these yeah. young actresses. To uh, to Harvey Cal Weinstein Institute. and all these yeah. and all these predators, uh, I think there was a report by the New York Times showing that at least eight CAA agents knew what was going on with Harvey Weinstein and continued sending their clients to see him. <sighs> And that's going to be the next phase of this. I think once, I think you, Anita's right, there's going to be first the process of clearing out the predators themselves and then going after the people who facilitated. uh, So, okay, so the other thing I'm going to ask, a lot of music artists, um, John Legend, there were like a lot of vocal, Lady Gaga obviously taking her song off of thing. I saw also blowback. Uh, Lady Gaga specifically, and maybe that's mm-hmm. because I, I I'm gay and I have t- a lot of <laughs> yeah. my feed tends to be, but they were basically saying that because she's in the midst of an Oscar campaign yeah. is why she's now becoming vocal. Mm-hmm. But that she had been asked for years to comment and be even back. Why are you collaborating with him? Why are you? 
do you, and not just her, but in, at large, do you think these music artists that are all of a sudden now coming are just sort of doing it because all of the information and that I, they actually did know yeah. a little bit more than they are I letting on? I think there is definitely a motivation because Dream Hampton, the writer and director of Surviving R. Kelly, she went on the record with the Detroit Free Press and said, these are the people I approach who would not do interviews with me, including... Um, Lady Gaga, yeah. Jay Z, mm -hmm. Dave Ch Chappelle, who had who knew about this and had mm -hmm. done skits about it. None of these people would go on the record. Now suddenly, that Gaga wants to be nominated for an Oscar later this month, she's releasing statements. She's taking music yeah. off streaming Chance services. Chance the rapper came forward too. Yeah, Chance the rapper came right. forward. <laughs> Which that was kind of interesting to watch because he based didn't he like he 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 denounced it but then he like backpedaled on it and then said part of his comments were because he was basically saying like I shouldn't have did the collaboration but then it was like the comments wh where it's, did that land yeah. because I was reading so it. So he was, pretty much <laughs> said he shouldn't have done the done you know the collaboration. Yes. And then he said uh, I guess he, I didn't believe it because it was from black black women, women. yes yes i mean it when i saw the documentary it was cut up he did end up releasing the full kind of mm -hmm. minute long statement okay it doesn't defend what he says at the end about i didn't believe it because it wasn't you know it was coming from black women i mean that's a heavy blow whoa that's a really heavy blow and yes. but at least he owned up to it and said that was wrong to say and like yeah. at least i can check myself exactly now. Yeah. Hmm. Can I just add this? Yes. I was disgusted by what Chance the Rapper said, mm -hmm. but I also want to go on the record and say the African American community was somewhat complicit yep. in this situation going on and on and on, including myself. I continued to buy R. Kelly's albums after he was acquitted. I thought, oh, well, this is over and maybe there was no truth. I don't know. I didn't see the tape. Yeah. But a lot of us, Step in the Name of Love, we continued to buy his records, but now that I have the full scope of what has happened, I've thrown out his CDs. Yes, I still have old CDs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll admit, I'll admit uh, the only song that I know of R. Kelly's are I like his I big one. Find. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah. know, right? But well. I can tell you this. I think I think that's really what you see in that, if you anyone who's watched the entire series, uh, that's really the theme of it is is how did we let this happen and how did the African American community in yeah. particular sort of elevate him to that place even after those charges sort of became public and I think the travesty of it all is really that acquittal that sort of gave him a clean slate yeah. Yeah. and that's the fact that these songs you know we think of uh, yeah. I think I could fly you know yeah. that one it's well, so inspirational right. well, musical genius yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you hear I believe I can fly at all of these powerful emotional events at funerals I feel I like mean, Idol yeah. how many times was, did people sing that on Idol I was a super <laughs> fan yeah. how many no, bad I versions of that were on way. Idol I was a super <laughs> fan I have all of his songs Fiesta um, right. I believe I can fly. Yeah. Uh, the and then greatest. he had like the trapped in the closet hits after oh, that, where he was I kind of mocking himself. That was a big. Yeah, it was right. like a what is it called? It was a like CD a six with the video. Yeah. And yeah. The midget <laughs> and like a, all of that. Yeah. So a second leg of this story now, in the documentary, and I want to make sure I'm pronouncing his name, Torre. Teray. Teray. the journalist who You're was so featured. White. <laughs> That's so why bad. I asked. <laughs> oh God. So um the although I did know what a lace front was as we told you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so wait. Um uh, Teray. Yeah. The journalist that was featured who did a lot of the like reporting, I guess, originally mm. on him. He did. Someone came, he was featured heavily, and then after it aired, a uh, makeup artist, right? Makeup mm -hmm. artist, correct? Yes. Came forward accusing him now. Mm -hmm. um, do we think he's done? Because I find journal journalists, we, which we all are, your major thing is credibility. Right. I feel like he's going to have a tough time coming back. Like, hypocrisy in journalism mm -hmm. is probably the worst. Especially the screenshots of the text where he's like, yeah. please don't tell people about me. Basically, at the end, it's like, oh, my God, what are you doing typing all of this? Like, this is, you that's should the know other, That's yeah. the other thing in writing. It's like, at least pick up the phone if you're right. going to be disgusting. Right. Have yeah. some. <laughs> not, the, not that it's <laughs> okay. Yeah. At yeah. All. But it's, yeah. But it is, it's like with the Matt Lauer situation, you see him interviewing men and attacking them about their actions when they're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, that's well, the most disappointing yeah, thing. Very, very true. Now, he, and she came had forward. An interview. She did come forward because he of sat the down, documentary. Yeah, with okay. R. Kelly in 2008. 
uh, for an interview for BET. Now, he's been um, with MSNBC and Rolling Stone. He's a very respected music journalist. Yeah. So I think I've done some like pop culture panels with him on CNN before, for sure. Yeah, the talking ex- head where you like fight about mm-hmm. stuff like we're doing yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this no squares. <laughs> yeah, I think the woman, the makeup artist, says this happened in about 2013. He was they were working together on a show for Time Inc. <laughs> and <laughs> the, just he kept repeatedly saying these horrible things to her. Yeah. And so um, he went on. Not only did he talk about his interview with R. Kelly in the docu series, he was in almost every part going on and and basically criticizing R. Kelly and talking about what a horrible human being R. Kelly was. And so the makeup artist saw him doing all these interviews, and she was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> yeah. he's got his own yeah. demons." Which goes to show, I mean, if you've done anything, anything, Me Too related, yeah, anything yeah. at all. Stay away from reporting Don't on do it. Don't do any reporting on it at all. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, wait a minute. My question is this, though. He, do you think it's, like, the, the reason that it's even worse because of how fairly recent? Like, you know how, like, we're talking about 10 years ago they did this, 20 years, yeah. 2013 we're talking about. That's, like, a hop, skip, and a jump ago. It was recent. Um, I just want I mean, final I, thoughts on this. Like, what, what's your thought? Like, like, what do you think? Is he done... Probably, I mean, but I think he his career was already was on a say. downward path. So I the mean, R. Kelly, yeah, okay. this is someone who you know had a show, was on MSNBC, I was did. I everywhere used to in the media. The time. And all now, I know this could did, have played now, into his current downfall. Well, just wasn't I was just going to yeah. say she yeah. said she complained and Bingo. she said that he that got, he got fired. fired from yeah. Tiny. He, got fired. he claims yeah. he claims it wasn't because of that though. Yeah, Stuart, you just brought up a good point that I'm so glad you did about. When you, when, and this is very true about actresses and actors. You know, when you, you knew a really talented actor and actress, and we know this, and I think the same's true with journalists. Where have they been? Why haven't you seen them? But then right. you start digging deeper. They were horrible to work with. They were mean people. They did. Yeah. So I think you are onto something with that. That that was actually really maybe why we hadn't seen him mm-hmm. uh, and why his career kind of yeah. did. Well, he has a podcast, and apparently, the like day everybody that else on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> the day that this story went viral, Essence Magazine broke it. Yeah. Um, Terry Crews was supposed yeah. to come on his podcast. Canceled. And what? Canceled. Exactly. Right. Once Terry got Shit. wind of all this, yeah. well, Terry, Terry Crews. Got he got said, got love Terry Crews. Terry. Like the thread that weaves everything together because then he's been very vocal about Kevin Hart. He's like, here's what yes. Kevin Hart is doing. I was like, Terry Crews, you were like, <laughs> yeah. Terry? he needs a talk show. Yeah. He tweeted, canceled. Well, yes. Referring to the interview. Didn't Terry, Terry, I love the fact that that's all he said. All so caps, not, not all one caps, word, yeah. cancel. And it was all caps, and all right? caps. <laughs> Yes, all caps. In case like you missed it. Yeah. yeah, but he, Terry Crews, to me, because he was the one that accused the uh, agent that yeah. led to, you know, justice for the agent that... He the first male that came forward. That came forward. He was on MSNBC, and let me tell you something, I'm so articulate about this, but like a true champion of this movement. And what he said was about R. Kelly... Uh, during that same thing we have to cancel Trey on MSNBC, he said, they're going to get him just like they got Harvey, just like they got <laughs> just like they got Bill. He said they're going to get him. And he said that other men, and I think we speak on behalf of men, need to hold other men. It's just as much of a responsibility mm-hmm. of men. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I want to move. We have so much more to cover. Yeah. Is there any last thoughts to end on here? That's There's so much. Yeah. We could talk about this, R. Kelly, because it's that disturbing. It's going to keep I, developing. Yeah. 